going to discuss the clinical application of the blood supply to the brain. Previous video I discussed about the blood supply of the brain where I made a mention that the brain is being supplied by two sets of arteries, two paired arteries, one pair from the vertebral arteries, the other pair is from the internal carotid arteries. So thereby having an anterior blood circulation to the brain as well as posterior circulation to the brain. The posterior circulation is from the two vertebral arteries while the anterior circulation is from the two internal carotid arteries. So what happens in stroke is there is a blockage or rupture of the arteries that are supplying the important structures responsible for the motor functions or sensory functions. You can remember while I was discussing the anterior circulation of the brain coming from these two internal carotid arteries, I made a mention about the lenticulostriate lentucul arteries. And these are branches that are coming from the middle cerebral arteries. And then these lenticulostriate arteries, they go deep into each of the cerebral hemispheres to supply the internal or deeper stru structures of the cerebrum. And that is the basal nuclei, the internal capsule, the hypothalamus, as well as the thalamus. And I'm sure you are aware or you know that the internal capsule is, you know, a bundle of, you know, axons or white matter bundles of fibers coming from the cortex. So all these cortical spinal fibers coming from the motor area and also sensory fibers coming from the spinal cord to the spinal cord through the brainstem to the somatosensory area of the cerebrum. So all these, you know, fibers, both motor and sensory, they conglomerate together in the internal capsule. So once there is a deficiency in the blood supply, you know, in, within the middle cerebral artery, especially, you know, before these branches to the internal structures, you know, is, uh, is being given out. So once there is a blockage of the one side of the middle cerebral artery, so these, you know, arteries that will go and supply the deeper structures are going to be devoid of blood supply. And so that's going to be what we call ischemia. So this ischemia is like a deficiency in the blood supply to an area. So once there is an ischemia, so the person is going to have what is known as stroke. And this stroke is nothing but a neurological deficit as a result of blockage of an artery supplying that internal capsule. And that is why these arteries, the lenticulostriate arteries, are called arteries of cerebral hemorrhage. So now we've seen how stroke happens once there is a blockage of this middle cerebral artery of one side. So it means that if this is the right side of the cerebral hemisphere, so when this right middle cerebral artery is being blocked before it gives rise to this lenticulostriate right arteries, so the left side of the body is going to be paralyzed. So that means the upper limb, the lower limb, and the half part of the uh, half side of that uh, uh, person is going to be, you know, uh, paralyzed. But when we have this kind of blockage of the right middle cerebral artery, the speech, the motor speech area is going to be spared because the left cerebral hemisphere is the dominant hemisphere. So because in the dominant hemisphere, that is where the broca's area of speech is located. And so as a result, the speech is going to be spared. Once you see somebody with stroke and there is involvement of speech, so it means that the middle cerebral artery is blocked on the left-hand side. And so the right side of the body is going to be paralyzed. And by so doing, if somebody has a right hemiplegia, it means that means it is going to be accompanied with, you know, motor speech, you know, deficit. And so that is, you know, for the middle cerebral artery. So once somebody has also a blockage of, you know, of either of the two 
cerebral arteries. For example, now if the right side of the cerebral artery is blocked, so remember if this side is blocked, the anterior cerebral artery from this side, as a result of this anterior communicating artery, this anterior communicating artery is going to give blood to the right side of the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. So that means blockage of any of this cerebral anterior cerebral artery does not have much effect on the on that side and unless if the two cerebral arteries anterior cerebral arteries are blocked at the same time by so doing the medial surfaces of each of the two cerebral hemispheres are going to be affected and by so doing there is going to be paralysis of the lower limbs if you can remember the motto homunculus you know representing the lower limbs it is located on the medial side of the each of the cerebral hemispheres and so if the anterior cerebral artery is being blocked on either side so the lower limbs are going to be affected the two lower lower limbs so that means that is what we call paraplegia of the lower limbs so supposing that everywhere here is okay and then there is only a blockage of the basilar artery at the level where it begins so that also will not have much impact because the blood supply from the two internal carotid artery will now follow the posterior communicating arteries to follow through the posterior cerebral arteries and go into the basilar arteries and supply this you know pantheon branches and also anterior inferior uh, cerebellar arteries and so on and so forth Similarly, if there is a blockage of any of this vertebral artery, for example, now vertebral artery of the right side is blocked. So the vertebral artery on the left hand side will now come and supply blood to the right, you know, cerebellum. Because this on the right side, the right vertebral artery gives rise to the right posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So the right pica is on this side and so if this right vertebral artery is blocked this posterior inferior cerebellar artery of the right side is not going to be affected because the left you know the left uh, uh, vertebral artery will now bring blood from this side and then it comes to this side and supply this right uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery together with the right posterior spinal uh, artery so also the same thing on the left hand side if this one is blocked so this one is going to compensate so that means the cycle of willis has an advantage in that it is going to give a collateral circulation to the posterior you know circulation if there is a blockage of the basilar artery you know stroke has various signs and symptoms and uh, this is going to be presented you know with the paralysis of upper limb paralysis of the lower limb inability to walk you know hypotonia in the muscles uh, uh, sorry hypotonia in the muscles because this is going to be an upper motor neuron paralysis because it is affecting the cortex cerebral cortex so there is hypertonia that means there is an increase in muscle tones there's also uh, increase in the reflexes of the joints of the body including the joints of the upper limb and joints of the lower limb on that side so there is hyperreflexia there's also hypertonia because there is increased muscle tone and also there is also uh, inability to walk you know on that uh, uh, from that side there's also deficit of the lower you know of lower face you know of, of, of that side similarly if it is the left side or the left cerebral hemisphere that is affected there is also going to be involvement of speech so